Uh, pubs, restaurants, cinemas, museums, just some of the businesses uh, which can reopen in England from July the 4th as lockdown is eased further. Uh, the Prime Minister announcing that social distancing guidelines will change from two metres to one metre plus, that's how he put it. He warned that all decisions were reversible if there turned out to be a spike in coronavirus cases. Let's turn to Dr Barrett Pankaria, who's a senior clinical lecturer at the University of Exeter, who joins us now, as you see. Doctor, welcome to you and thanks for your time. Um, how much of a gamble is this? Uh, it is a gamble. Uh, it is a measured action. Um, what I am advising is if you are going to move from two metres to one metre, the risk increases. So what you do is you make sure you do mitigation in place of the two metres reducing to one metre. So face masks, I don't infect you, you don't infect me, would also be a good measure to undertake and continue with not mingling with too many humans. Yeah, which the Prime Minister stressed, hasn't he? He's, he said that, for instance, if you, if you don't need to make a journey, uh, don't make it. He also stressed that uh, this wasn't irrevocable. If it turned out that either you had local hotspots that needed uh, localised lockdown, as, uh, and as he put it, uh, cluster busters, uh, specific tracing for that area, that could be done. But he didn't rule out the idea of even having national lockdown again if there were to be a really serious second spike. I hope we will not have another lockdown. It has been difficult for the country. And in my heart, I don't believe that we will ever have another lockdown because the the, the backbone isn't there for such a thing again. Uh, and I would like to hold the prime minister, the government to their word and do as they say, that if the situation is not in control, having lifted the lockdown, we go back into control measures. Of course, it is better to maintain control measures from the beginning. But as you say, it is a gamble. And I would like to sort of have that absolute cast iron promise that if the case numbers go up, we will have to consider uh, uh, control measures again. This feels like a really significant punctuation mark in Britain's coronavirus uh, story, doesn't it? Even little things, for instance, like the, the daily number 10 press conference uh, will no longer happen on a, on a daily basis. It feels like a change is in the air. Is this the moment to reflect upon the fact that, uh, at least at the, very, at the very most basic level, the fears that maybe clinicians like you, certainly people in the media had uh, three months ago when lockdown began, that the NHS itself might be overwhelmed, did not come to pass? Indeed, and it is a time to reflect, but it is also time to be aware that whilst we are in the middle of June, um, autumn will soon arrive, and therefore our behaviours will change again. We will be indoors and we will be infecting more people. So we need to sort of say to ourselves, summer is here, that doesn't mean autumn will not arrive, and we need to have that watchfulness and preparedness. Preparedness is very important. And I would really urge Prime Minister Johnson now to say we are going to have a regional approach to testing, contact tracing, and managing it regionally, because what happens in London doesn't necessarily happen in Bath, where I live. And therefore, we need regional autonomy to run the show uh, because we may have local flare-ups, as we said. One place that has been a, a local flare-up is in, in Germany, the meatpacking processing factory, a slaughterhouse. Uh, you make the point about uh, the seasonal dimension that we have to look at here. Is there a sense, perhaps, in which... Uh, these meat processing plants are a kind of laboratory that we can look at in the sense that the temperature there, let's say it's five degrees, it's humid, it's an enclosed space. It, it's, a, it's a microcosm for, the, for what we may see uh, come the winter uh, and perhaps offers some clues there as to some of the problems which may yet beset us. Absolutely, and you correctly described the biology of how the virus performs. That is, in a crowded place, uh, in a cool place, in a humid place, where there's lots of people, one infectious person will infect others, and so on. So therefore, uh, we know all this, and yet it has happened. And I repeat, considering we know, we mustn't ignore what we know, and we must act and be prepared on exactly this sort of thing happening again. It will happen, because somehow we don't seem to want to learn. We think that the virus will behave slightly differently. It won't. It will do what it does. Uh, on, on track and tracing, you mentioned tracing. How, how concerned ought we to be about the apparent, at least for now, f uh, failure, uh, or at least inability to perform very well, of the, of the app? 
in particular the fact that what the app could do was tell you when you came into contact, contact with somebody who was infected who you didn't know and it's difficult to see how pen and paper tracing, telephone tracing can work as well. Oh, we are past masters of contact tracing. We are very good, and I'm so disappointed that we don't do it with the pen and paper way because mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the South Koreans uh, didn't use applications. They did the pen and paper and what I call shoe leather. So we are abandoning what we know and what we know how to do really well in preference for a technology-led thing, which is a good thing, but it doesn't always work, as we have seen. So we need to have had a multifaceted approach. And again, this centralized contact tracing does not have the precision of the local contact tracing that we did, for example, during pandemic influenza. We have done this, we know how to do it, and we have the expertise locally. I still can't understand why we are not doing it locally. I, I, I suppose there will be those people who say, well, oh, but in South Korea they may have not used an app, but they did use things like closed-circuit TV footage to a degree that would probably not be acceptable in the UK with our, our tradition of uh, civil rights. I totally agree with you, and therefore uh, we have to have a more uh, lenient, more measured approach. But what we have just not done is get uh, a, a large army of expert contact tracers locally driven by local experts supervising them, rather than we've now finally recruited uh, many thousand uh, contact tracers, but they are sitting in a centralized operation, reading a computer algorithm and a script, whereas there's a little bit more nuanced in uh, contact tracing. And if you do it locally, you know the movements of people, you know the pubs they go to, you know the social circles, and you, do, you are quite more efficient that way. Dr. Pekkania, I really appreciate your time. Thanks very much. Thank you.